April of 2011, Bento is a harem anime centered around the idea of going to the local supermarket to beat a shit out of Samak for a half price home packed meal. Sounds like a lot of fun, and it actually is. The show successfully found a way to make this bizarre and yet not so unrealistic concept to work. Bento takes a lot of liberties in regard with the law and the principles of gravity. But hey, it is an anime after all, so realism isn't exactly something I would expect in this particular scenario. It is a spectacle to see grown men and teenagers with nothing else better to do fight each other in a brutal brawl for cheap food while other more sane citizens witness passively while grocery shopping. Experienced brawlers that fight for half price bento boxes are known as wolves, while newcomers and ones using cheap tricks are named dogs. While technically bento brawls are a free for all, the battlegrounds have a strict set of rules to keep some sort of order among the chaos. The most obvious requirement for a relatively fair fight is that every participant has to wait away from the bento area until the half price stickers are placed on the bento boxes. And of course, once a brawler has his hands on one of them, he has to be allowed to walk away with his prize. Aside from that, whatever methods can be used, from simply throwing punches, to using baskets and chopsticks as weapons, even forming groups or tag teaming an opponent, it is all allowed in a bento brawl. And now it's as good a time as any to introduce the protagonist of the story, called Sato. The anime starts with the main character just walking up after a serious beatdown at the local supermarket. He has no memories of the event, but despite all that, his injuries are superficial enough for him to be able to attend his first day of high school. Sato enjoys playing retro video games, something similar with Street Fighter, I reckon. Otherwise, he spends the rest of his time living like an average teenage boy, daydreaming and jerking off to Playboy magazines. At first glance, the protagonist might not look like much, and yet it is his personality that shines. It makes him an interesting and fun character. Despite many humiliations and unfortunate accidents, he still remains optimistic and does not hold grudges against the ones that did him wrong. And believe me, he's been wrongfully accused and punished too often for me to count. Somehow Sato still managed to stay confident in his abilities, which shows strength, willpower and determination. His attributes helped a lot, and by the end of the show, he actually became a total badass in the role. While still remaining the same gentle and honest person he was at the beginning. The main cat is also a pervert, which I was glad to witness, as it is way more enjoyable to have a harm king that appreciates the girls around him. I can see so much skin. He often fantasizes about them, adding a bit of humor to his hormonal struggle. I'll be able to stand up soon. Tell her part of you is already standing. I want to make it up to you. I can think of a couple of things you can do. I'll let you have half of my next bento. Aww. Luckily, most of the female characters seem to have developed feelings for him, some more subtle than others. I also have to mention the abundance of comedy spread throughout the show. There are plenty of funny lines and moments that made the anime a fun experience, to say the least. The absurdity of fighting in an all-out brawl for half-priced bento boxes works surprisingly well with the harem echi genre. And yeah, the show has plenty of fan service. In most of its episodes, this class representative chick has the best scenes of them all. I mean, hot damn. Haven't seen so much girl on girl tension since Citrus. I demand that you take a bath immediately. Wait, what? Hey, wait a second! Don't you think maybe we should discuss this first? <laughs> but before I move on to describe the secondary characters, I'd like to address the story. Bento does not necessarily have a cohesive and complex story, but for the most part, it gets the job done. I mean, come on. The anime is about beating the shit out of people in a supermarket. And to be honest, the show did a decent job in creating a narrative to tie all these crazy events together. As long as the story was character focused, it was engaging and fun, like getting to know the Ice Witch that served as an introduction to the Bento Battlegrounds, and then later on introducing some hot twins to the mix. Where the story started to drag was when the Monarch became a prominent figure, and the anime focused more on his plan to take over 
the Western battlegrounds to later on change into a more personal affair. That arc didn't knew what it was about from the beginning, but thankfully it only lasted like two episodes, and then the anime goes back to its fun characters and visually impressive fight sequences. And oh boy, the fights in the show are intense. They are so engaging and fun to watch, it is always appealing to see what kind of techniques or weapons the next contender will use to get his hands on a half price bento box. Such a variety of fighters with interesting personalities and motives competing against each other creating a visual spectacle in the process. Nice try, beauty. I also like the ending, it reminded the audience in a thematic and clever way what the whole anime was all about, hungry, crazy people risking permanent injuries to get a cheap meal for the half of its initial price. There's a certain charm in its simplicity that managed to keep me entertained till the end. Ok, let's talk about the ladies. The first Sato encounters is Hana Oshiroi, a frail yet energetic girl that's a bit of a germaphobe. Is that really necessary? I don't want your hands to be covered in germs and oil from my hair. She's not a fighter type at all and usually resolves to sneaking past the other wolves to grab her bento. Hey, Hana is easily flustered and spends most of her free time writing some gay fanfiction, starring a main character called Muscle Cop that strongly resembles Sato. <laughs> I really like the passion she has for her work and the dirty look on her face whenever she comes up with some weird idea for her novel. Holy cow! This is fappable! Yes, mama likey! What's funny about her is that despite her fantasies, she's the one that experiences the most physical contact with other women, primarily Ume Shiraume. Get hand cramps and everything! That's you know, scraping right now! Like this is all my fault somehow. <laughs> what can I do? Ume is the student council president and is obsessed with Hana, getting extremely jealous whenever the main character spends time with her. Leave her alone. Now she's mine! <gasps> do you catch my drift? Uh. Ume slowly develops a habit of dominating and punishing Sato out of frustration, resulting in scenes where the protagonist has to endure a lot of verbal and physical abuse. Hold on, are you telling me you were? Ray, 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 Ray. Not even close. She's not exactly faithful though, as Sume often flirts with other girls like Ayame, the main character's cousin. As I previously stated, Seto has a hot cousin Ayame Shaga, which surprisingly is later on revealed to be half Italian. I think you'd be more into fashion, I mean since you're half Italian and all. Hmm, from personal experience and common knowledge, it's very likely for an Italian girl to have blonde hair and blue eyes, but I digress. She's a hardcore gamer and naturally on many occasions enjoys flirting with her blood relative. Do you mind if I sit up here with you? Well, no, but she's also a wolf known as the beauty by the lake. She's beautiful. Now we couldn't have had a proper harem without her relative to show up, and I do indeed enjoy her character. She's an energetic and open person. Shaga likes to talk a lot and is very confident in her appearance. I mean look at her. She's gorgeous. Even the protagonist can't stop but admire her beauty. How about we play a game instead? <sighs> oh wow, you have Space Harrier. Let's play that one. <laughs> when it comes to fighting though, I hope she would have been stronger. Don't get me wrong, she's a tough opponent to face, but in the end Shaga proved to be too weak to challenge the Ice Witch. The part I like the most is when she gets too close to Hana and has to face Ume's wrath in an unconventional way. Finally it's time to talk about the Ice Witch. Her real name is Sen Yarizui, a second year student who is the current president of the half-priced Food Lovers Club. The main character first met her in a bento brawl where he got his ass kicked so hard he ended up in a hospital. You could say she's the one that introduced him to the event even though at first she advises him not to get involved. She's one of the strongest wolves in the west and while usually calm, she's very innocent and does not particularly know a lot outside bento brawls. Despite her tough and dominant appearance, she's a sensitive and feminine girl. She's determined to live her life as a wolf and is very stubborn when it comes to defending her territory. 
If I were to guess, I'd say the Ice Witch is the main love interest of the protagonist. Sato sometimes fantasizes about her, and yet it is unknown if she also has feelings for him. Wait, she loves me? Hold me. There are moments here and there which could be interpreted as Sam trying to get closer to Sato, but I'm not certain if there's actual romance between them. To be honest, the main character has better chances of getting late with his cousin, but I guess this is not exactly that type of anime. We also have this weird chick, Asebi Inoue, which was introduced halfway into the show. She's cursed with extreme bad luck, which spreads to anybody she touches, usually Sato. Frankly, I have no idea why the show even included her at all. She barely has any screen time, as it is. I mean, she's an interesting girl and all, but throughout the whole anime, she doesn't do one memorable event. Even Oshimoto has a more prominent role to play. What was that big guy's name again? Quasimodo? No, that's not it. Last but certainly not least, it's time for the twins to make the entrance. They are both called Kyo. My name is Kyo Sawagi, and this is my little sister, Kyo. See, my Kyo is the one in myocardial infarction. Her Kyo is the one in Bellflower, and my Kyo is the one in Mirror. And are the representative student council president and vice president of the school Shaga goes to. They are also wolves, and fight as a duo, creating a combo using shopping baskets, calling themselves Orthros. The twins are a pretty safe bet for the strongest wolves in town, and ever since their appearance, They've been dominating the Bento battlegrounds. They also dress like nurses for fan service reasons and play doctor for the main character. My little heart's beating so fast. It's like like first love. Which was hot and funny in the same time. Those two nurses are about to fight over me. Hmm. I definitely want the hot one to win. <sighs> no more grandma. Okay guys, I give Bento a 7.5 out of 10. Definitely a present surprise. While the story is rather weak, the show has well developed and fun characters. Combine that with visually impressive fight sequences and you got yourself a memorable anime.